Hey there, folks. Welcome back to Let's Play Mass Effect 3, the Omega DLC. Not that it's the last DLC, but you know what I mean. I'm Sirius JG, and uh, we're invading Omega. Because reasons. The Omega Skyline. Now I feel like I'm back. Here is a big softie. What are those things in the distance? Some kind of force field. Yeah, I don't think she planned for this. Uh, but what was I going to say before I got rolling here? That's right. The um, DLC so far has been... I mean, there's cool new settings to wander around in. There's another location for Batarian State Arms, but... I don't want to say underwhelming. I don't want to sound like I'm being hard on the DLC itself, but the combat hasn't been too bad. And I'm thinking... Enemies scroll with you, but I think the enemy layouts don't change depending on your level. Could be wrong about that. So far, the toughest Cerberus enemy we fought have been snipers. I don't think we fought them at the same time as the shield guys either, the guardians. Um, haven't fought any of those like goofy-ass Cerberus ninjas. But you can take this mission on fairly early in the main story if you want. Matter of fact, I think you could take this mission on bef before you actually do... Her little side quest, the dialogue heavy side quests that don't actually involve gameplay, where you unify the Blue Suns, Blood Pack, and Eclipse. Uh, wouldn't really, that would be kind of a bit weird. Like, if you bring Omega back and she's still, like, asking you to do little favors before she'll give you war assets to help you out. But then again, she doesn't have those mercenary groups under her control before you do that stuff, so they're not really hers to give you. Um, that being said, uh, she's pretty much openly on your side from early on in the story. You're not convincing her to help you. You are getting her control of resources that she'll give to you. Makes a lot of sense, um, from her perspective. Shepard's less so. You're like, well, you know, why doesn't he just take this stuff for himself and use it to help in the war effort? But she has organizational skills that would be quite useful. Uh, but no, at the end of the day, what I guess I'm trying to get at is she has nothing to gain from the galaxy being taken over by Reapers. Uh, Bobo and others have asked the question, is it going to turn out the elusive man and all of Cerberus is indoctrinated? Because otherwise, nothing they're doing makes sense. Uh, by this point in the story, and bearing in mind the DLC has additional extraneous story material, that's pretty much what I was convinced was going on with Cerberus. It doesn't really make sense for anybody to be opposing Shepard at this point, other than the reaper people. We can't actually get over there. This is just a, like, glimpse at things to come. We can't actually get over there and interact with that yet. So let's move on in the direction that we can go. Uh, I think this control screen does something plotty. That wasn't that interesting. Everybody else? Fuck off. Here, Cerberus is bitches now. Oh. oh, that's right. Cerberus is like... You know, now that I think about it, I've been playing all that Wolfenstein recently. Cerberus kind of are Nazis. Please They've... They've got this thing where they don't like uh, races other than their own. But instead of Aryans, it's humans. Because, you know, distinctions between, you know, Caucasians, blacks, any other group, Jews, which fall under the... Well, that's not why am I getting into discussion of the races? Those kind of distinctions, if there's one thing that's going to end racism in the human species, it's going to be when we actually encounter aliens that we can, like, prejudicially dislike. That beautiful day Martin Luther King dreamed of when we encounter aliens and decide we hate them because they're different. Okay, I've changed my mind about leaving you on. It's irritating me. Might be cool, awesome dialogue we're missing this way, but... Omega's mine! Motherfucker! Oh! 
split second earlier and I would have got him in the nuts. Let's move. Okay. You just wait right there until I'm ready. I don't know why I'm on this weird power trip with Shepard all of a sudden. It's weird that the moods that take me, you would, if you never met me in the real world in any way, shape, or form, you could get a pretty false impression of my personality for my LPing. But, um, I've noticed I've been oddly, like, predisposed to jump towards weird sex comments when playing, of all games, Tales of Asperia. I don't know what's going on. When I play this game, the last few times I've played this game, it's been uh, in the evenings, and I've been drinking Diet Mountain Dew. And that was, as I was told by people bitching about how, back when we played, uh, let's play together Diablo 2, and it would have all these comments along the lines of, wow, this is so cool, Grimoth, I just wish you were playing it with, like, Kiko instead of this guy. Well, these guys, and mostly they were mad at me, I think they were okay. But, like, somebody was, somebody made all these comments about how, you know, JG runs off with the mouth randomly. And, um, I was all offended by it. Uh, and it was like, yeah, well, I'm drinking all this Mountain Dew to stay up into the wee hours of the night. Which is when Grimoth and Bobo are available to play. And now, as I run off at the mouth reminiscing about that, I'm basically proving the guy's point. Although I took some comfort in the fact that as English is probably the guy's second language. He's probably a super intelligent, incredibly articulate dude speaking his own language, but he was uh, trying to say it in English. He was saying, like, stuff that sounded silly, and it made me feel better. But, oh, well, your criticisms aren't valid because you're saying them silly. In Scandinavia land, we call people who speak like you do the water mouth because it is like water is gushing from their mouth. It's nonsense. And Naval Land is one of my favorite countries. Ah. Gang signs? Is this what you're about? One last check for loot. Oh, there's no loot. I have got to get focused on this game and not. Looks like a gang tag. Yeah. The Talons. They used to deface my property, too. I'm going to kill them all. Well, this is your property, right? Yeah, I got to get. Stop talking about, like, all random nonsense and get onto this game. I'm ruining the awesome Omega DLC. It's a bit, a little underwhelming after this one, but... That station we want you to report to? Bob! Turn your knob to Bob! Huh? Turn your crank to Frank. The Talon symbol again. Yeah, I know. I mean, we... Could be evidence of a resistance. Actually, can't see it. Might be useful. Or not. Could be a bunch of old graffiti left over from when you were in charge that Cerberus didn't bother to, like, uh, clean up. Even the credits associated with loots haven't been, like... Usually in the DLCs, they're like inflated. You get a ton of credits for all the loots because it's like pay your real world money to get more in game resources. I, I'm not taking an issue with it, I'm just pointing out that's how it all works. You should default in my mind to Flare. I think that's a cool skill. I didn't mean to make her use it there, although now that I think about it, yeah, that's kind of what's going to happen. But no, on her own, she keeps, uh, map power. Now, she keeps going back to Reeve. He, her AI likes Reeve. What can I say? It probably turns out to actually be more useful. One of my soldiers by the force field. Take him out. I have a feeling that soldier's gonna die as part of a plot thing that we won't be able to, to prevent. That's how it tends to work. Feel bad for him. What the hell is he doing? Let's stop him. <gasps> it's server super robot? What was that? They make it look all badass in its debut, but I, I recall these things as not being all that impressive. Ah, oh, that's too bad. I th the Vorchar are just poorly done by. 
this whole message of like everyone work together, all races are the same underneath. And then they give us the Vorcha to be these like space um bombs. They just wanted us to have a, at least one new Respect enemy type for the DLC. The field. Fair enough. Uh, let's read up on them in the journal. Oh, Aria to look. The landing area... The landing is not gone according to plan. Reach Aria's bunker before service does. Yeah, so the plot of this thing so far, just on a quick side note, is Aria launches a plan which seems incredibly stupid where they ram the ship into Omega and hope that you survive, which you do, but now it's just you and Arya running around fighting people in small arms combat with no members of her resistance uh, or army effectively helping you at all. That's been the plot. But I wanted to go look at the codec and see Omega Reclaimed, Omega Secrets, Arya to look. We can learn about her, we can learn about this, I don't care about that, but this. Service soon faces the problem of controlling stations large and often lost population. They uh, put up force fields, service titans control, units could pass through the force fields, we're good, so they mess with Loki mechs and change them around, okay. So they got targets troublemakers anywhere, Omega, you can read all that, you can pause and read it if you feel like it, but the big thing is that they can go through those shields, which makes them a pain in the butt, because you fight them in areas where your motion is much more limited than theirs. Um, doesn't end up making a big difference most of the time. The Rampart mech destroys the shotguns, aluminum alloy, heat dispersal units when it's destroyed. Coding nearby it sounds like a resident. So they basically blow up uh, when they're defeated. They they have splash damage explosions, so you don't want to melee them. Um, in extreme situations, they will overclock in a hunter killer mode, diverting power from its unique shields to single mindedly destroy its target. They faster. Uh, I don't remember any of that being an issue. Mostly it's just that you don't want to kill them with, with melee. It's inside I tend to be in range anyway, so that's fine. Actually, this is for the first time in a long time that I could be getting some good use out of... Uh, I've been trying to use it a bit, but... Uh, I associate it with um, Warden, who I really, really loved. But I incinerate. I should be using incinerate. Oh, and hacking! Why the hell am I not using hacking? Well, because it tends to just make battles last forever. Still, for the first time in a long time, I could get some use out of it. Or I could just blow their heads off. You can always hack them to slow them down and then blow their heads off. No rule against that. But overall, because this build is actually quite similar to the... Need to check out that force field. When I did my off-screen, I had the same build, basically. This is the character type I enjoy playing, so I figured it's the one I would Over showcase. Here, no, he was a soldier, but I still preferred using sniper rifles, and yeah. If you have incinerate, if you have sniper rifles, if you have hacking, all that stuff... I don't think I had hacking on my off-screen. But, um... I'm actually fairly good, despite my trouble with some geth units. Like, real trouble with those primes at the end of the last anti-geth mission. Uh, robots are not really as big a threat to my shepherd as, uh, bio biological. And, um, in my defense, can I even go through it and die? No, it's just a wall for me. But, um, in my defense, in that whole Geth battle with the Primes, somebody was, like, telling me, wow, i never seen it be that tough before. And I don't think they were trying to mock me, but either way, that was like the last hurrah in the Mass Effect series for the Geth as enemies, at least until 4 comes out. Rumors about 4 that it's going to be set very far away physically from uh, this game, like not in the Milky Way, so there'll be like different enemy, different species in, at play and whatnot. I wouldn't mind seeing a prequel set during like the, uh, the war between the humans and the Turians or something, but whatever. whatever. Point is, that's that big battle where the primes were like kicking the shit out of me, that was like it for the Geth. So it's it's good that they uh, didn't go down. Poor easy. idiot. Something tells me these force fields are going to be a problem. Are Thank we blocked? You. Not this time. Come here. Cock blocked. Sorry. This way. Ugh. 
What are you doing? Letting you in on a secret. Ooh. Down the ladder. I like girls. That's my big secret, Shepard. I know it's shocking that one of us blue-head tentacle chicks from the entirely female race likes girls, but I do. Actually, I'll just tell you now since I'm not going to showcase it since I'm all paragon -y. But uh, near the end of this thing, you can make out with uh, Arya if you choose Renegade Path stuff. It's similar to the way that if you're Renegade, you get to like have a little scene with uh, Shaira, the Asari consort in the first game. And uh, I am told, having never actually seen it uh, with a female character, but Arya's facial expressions suggest that she likes kissing male Shep, but she prefers kissing female Shep. So, blue uh, tentacle head chick fanboys. Get all excited about that. Third squad mate would be nice, gotta say. Arya not setting me on fire here, uh, because she's got that cool solar flare skill. Maybe it isn't practical for use, but she's not using it. Oh, but speaking of third squad mates. Who's there? I actually Show forgot yourself. this is when we get her, so I just... Spirit. Look who's back. Arya Tolo. Spirit? You mean like vodka, whiskey? What the? Nairi. It's a Turian with a high-pitched voice. What are you doing here? Playing cat and mouse, mostly. Just trying to stay alive. If it wasn't for these tunnels. My tunnels. Bitch. I'm sure glad I showed them to you. If you hadn't, I'd be dead or locked up by now. Mm. You two must be close. You're getting sloppy, Arya. What about... What the... It took until a DLC pack in the third game before I got to see a female Turian? Arya doesn't trust easily. I guess you're a good friend. A snappy Nine dresser one. and a good friend. Are we, Arya? Shepard, this is Nani Kandros, ex-Turian military. We go way back. I've got a lot of questions, but they'll have to wait. Follow us, we'll get you to safety. No, seriously, I'll we do can my stop best. and I'll answer some questions if you like. You look... Female. I mean, capable. Ready to put that gun to good use? You have no idea how ready. So there's not going to be any comment on the fact that Shepard's never met a female Turian. I guess uh, it's a little reminder. Hey, go to the squad screen and set her powers, because, you know, you haven't. But uh, maybe in, like, off-screen action, he's meant to have seen Turian females before, so it's not that big of a deal, but... Um, it seems kind of strange. And she's all covered up. Like, not like, oh my god, sexy, sexy, I want to see a female Turian's body. But, yeah, it's like they didn't really know exactly how to design them to make them look different from the... Because I guess they're supposed to be avian, which means, what, did, like, the female birds have big female markers that wouldn't mean much to male gamers? Or, you know, human gamers, I should say. Eh, whatever, Turian Huntress... Watch out, Garrus. She's on the hunt. Uh, increases power, damage, boost defensive abilities. All right, let's. As ever, we're gonna do the passives. Uh, weapon damage or durability. I will favor weapon damage, although that might come back to bite me. Arya has died already a few times in this DLC. Biotic damage or tech damage. I don't know which one of these to do because I haven't looked at her powers. So let's back out for a sec. Lift grenade is biotic, I'm thinking. Biotic protector. Oh. Deploy a shield that protects against all damage at the dispense of moving, shooting, or using powers while it is enabled. Overload and incinerate. Well. She's only got one offensive biotic power. Biotic protector does not appear to damage anything. I guess we can look and see. Trigger a three meter radius blast when deploying the shield. Dealing damage. Yeah, so I guess there is a way it can damage. But um it doesn't even if that's like the coolest thing that she's got going for, it doesn't really seem to make sense to try to make her lift grenade better when she's got incinerate and overload ready to go. So we will boost her tech damage. And then we can increase power damage by 30%, or increase the power of the squad's tech and biotic powers by 20%. Uh, let's go with the squad one. 
Biotic Protector, since this is unique, we might as well see it in action as effectively as we can. So, these are just, there's, when there's no decision to make, I don't even bother to read up on them, honestly. It's like, okay, it's getting better in some way. Sounds good. Okay, this is the one that can make it do damage. This is the one that, 50% chance of not triggering a cooldown. That's probably better. 300 points is not a whole hell of a lot of damage. So, like, you know, a little tick of damage on them, or uh, half the time she actually gets to do it as badly, or as long as she wants. Kind of recharge speed or duration. Let's go for duration. I don't know, it's, it doesn't seem like that cool a power, but the fact that no one else in the game has it. I could grab this as a special, special power. Uh, after completing this, I could go in and replace my defensive drone with, with these, I think. Uh, might be wrong. But, I mean, they're both biotic, and I've already said I'm not going to give this shepherd a bunch of biotic special powers at the end, because it would just be silly. Deal 50% more weapon damage for 10 seconds after the shield expires, or reduce incoming damage by 50% for 10 seconds. Let's stick with it being defensive. Doesn't... I don't know if that was preferable, but let's make it a purely defensive power. All right, overload, because that'll be good against uh, Cerberus guys, uh, the robots, and more importantly, in my mind, the uh, Cerberus troops carrying guns. Chain overload is good. Uh, neural shock or recharge speed. Actually, I like neural shock. I, I wish it was still its own power in this game. Chain overload again, or shield damage. Yeah, chain overload's good. Lift grenade just kind of seems dumb, but I guess we can... Well, let's actually get the best ever incinerate going. Then we'll give her the option. We'll give her... If we give her lift grenade, it means she'll have a shitty version of lift grenade that her AI can use instead of her better powers. Yay. Increase damage or increase impact radius. Let's go for raw damage. I don't think that's how I did mine, but what the hell. Raw damage, and nobody's using freezy stuff, so raw damage. Oh, actually she doesn't get lift grenade, so that's actually good. It means she won't have like a... Well, let's say it deals high damage. 800 something damage. But if you actually have to use a grenade, so she won't be using it anyway. Maybe I should be using lift grenades. Hmm. Whatever. Arya's got one skill point, so forget that. It's not gonna, not gonna mean a thing. And that's not new. She's had one skill point for a while. I'm just forgetting. Just why you back, lady? Left something behind. I take it. Not something. Everything. Wow, I knew you guys were close. I didn't realize you were that close. <laughs> We go way back. We were fantastic, unstoppable threat in the three-legged race. Anyway, um, the three-legged race is an inferior race that Cerberus will destroy along with all the non-human races. Once again, this video is going to end up a little short, but uh, I've hit a point where I need to take just a very brief break. So um, when we come back, folks, more of Mass Effect 3 Omega DLC. Seems like a natural break point, because uh, now you'll get to see... Uh, our Lady Turian in action in our next video. Bye for now.